Welcome to My Thoughts with Dale Van de Bogart, a biblical view of today's world issues. And now, here's Dale. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of My Thoughts. And I would like to welcome all of our faithful watchers and our new ones as well. As a reminder, all of our teaching notes are in PDF and located on our website, bdbm.org. Go ahead and click on uh, the uh, My Thoughts video series, scroll down the, on the page to choose the series, and download our notes. No problem. And they are free of charge. Now, our segment this week is called The Store of Corrupted Behaviors. And I'm going to discuss behaviors that corrupt and destroy us as Christians. You see, Satan loves and delights in seeing us turn away from God. Now, uh, while I get a little more of the intro, go ahead, open up your Bibles, and it doesn't matter if it's a paper Bible, like I mostly use, or if it's a digital Bible, use it on your phone or tablet. Go ahead, turn it to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. We'll start at verse 26, go to the end, which is verse 32. And then we'll start at verse 5, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. So, now, I want to talk to you about beware of shopping at this, at this store. See, now, one day I was reading my daily devotional, and I came across one that got me thinking of a song from a long time ago. And as I was reading uh, what is now our main passage text, the song came on very strong. See, we've all visited the store of corrupted behaviors. The proprietor of this store, we know, we know that Satan, would like nothing more than to have us to continue to visit this store, since stock up on all the latest items of behaviors that corrupt our lives. Now, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we stopped shopping at this store. And we started shopping at the store of godly behaviors. Now, unfortunately, we have this bad habit of we keep wanting to return back to Satan's store when we get hurt, disappointed, or feeling God's not listening, or has forsaken us, which we know he never will. Now, the Apostle Paul discussed these same behaviors with members at the church of, at, in Ephesus. He told us how to stop shopping there, how to rid ourselves of those corrupt behaviors, and how to shop at, at, at God's store to store up these godly behaviors. So, everybody should have your Bibles open, ready to go. Let's read our passage text. For this segment, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 through 32, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. So let us start. Now, be angry and do not sin. Let not the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil, speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God 
for a sweet-smelling aroma, but fornication and all uncleanliness or or covetousness, let it not be uh, even named among you as it is as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talk nor coarse jesting, uh, which is not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now, let's start out with the buyer beware. See, there's an old Latin phrase for this title. It's called caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. You need to be aware. We all need to be aware. I'm just as guilty as anybody uh, and to let, you know, to, to, to let these in, in, into, into our lives. See, Proverbs 4.23 tells us to keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. See, when we let corrupt behaviors into our lives, we're going to start developing a bad heart condition. So let's let's take a look at these corrupt behaviors. So we look at we look at Ephesians 4 first and we look at verses 26 and 27. Anger. That's the first corrupted behavior. See, if you vent your anger carelessly, you're going to hurt and destroy any relationships with other people. Now, a big problem with us is keeping our anger inside and letting it build up. That's just as bad. This type of behavior can cause us to be bitter and destroy us from within. Now, Paul tells us to deal with our anger immediately in a way that builds relationships rather than destroys them. See, if we hold on to our anger, we give Satan the opportunity to divide us. Anger must be dealt as quickly as possible in a godly way. Now, anger used correctly can actually motivate us to, uh, to right or wrong, redress a, 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 a grievance, or correct an injustice. Now, used improperly, it can burn us and everyone else around us. We must reserve our anger for when we see God dishonored or people wrong. See, we can get angry, but let us do so without sinning. All it will do is add what we all call fuel to the fire. So let us also not allow Satan to gain a stronghold on us. Now, James 4, 7 states plainly to resist the devil and he will flee from you. Satan will use your anger to destroy your life, relationships, unity with others, and love. Now, here are two questions I want you to ask yourself right now. Are you angry with someone right now? And, question number two, what can you do to resolve your differences? See, don't let the day end before you begin working on mending your relationship. Now, the second corrupt behavior that Satan has plenty of and love to give to you and stock up your shopping cart with stealing. We look, find that in verse 28. So when we think of stealing or a thief, it concerns like a bandit or a person who engages in the livelihood of being a thief. Now Paul explains that such a person who became a believer has put off their old corrupted lifestyle and turned to honest work in making a living. Now, two things that go together are stealing and idleness. 
Satan always has plenty of, of these corrupted behaviors on, on his shelf in that store of corrupted behaviors and would like for you to take as much as you can. Now remember, Satan is also a thief, and he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. We read that in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. Paul told them not, on, not uh, only to stop stealing, but to begin honest work. All believers should work hard and do their part in the community, hold their own, and not expect anyone to support them. The third corrupted behavior is unwholesome words. We read in, in uh, verse 29. So now a while back, you know, I did a six-part series on words and how powerful they are. And I invite everyone to access our YouTube channel, as you have done watching this, and watch them. And, or I have the link below if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you can't access or you don't have, uh, or you're trying to find how to get us on YouTube, we have a link below on, 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 our, on all our documents. And we also have the link uh, on, on our website as well that you can click on and it'll take you right to our YouTube channel. And you can watch that six-part series and I encourage it greatly. So please watch that six-part series on Words Are Powerful. And as believers now, uh, let's get back, we must be careful about how or what we say to others and about ourselves. You know, we must, uh, we must, uh, we must never allow unwholesome words or talk to come out of our mouths. Now, the word unwholesome means corrupt, uninteresting, worthless, like gossip and slander, and foul talk or language. This type of speech is worthless, spreads worthlessness, and leads others to think about worthless matters. See, our speech should, kept, we should be kept clean and truthful. We should speak only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. We must be wise in choosing our words, for even good words, unless used inappropriately, can be destructive instead of useful. Speech should edify, not tear down. Now, what can we benefit, or what can we say, or what we say can benefit those who listen? Now, see, God can work through our words to help others and bring His grace to them. Now, the fourth corrupted behavior is is grieving, and we found in verse thirty. Now, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit took up residence within us. You know, he can be grieved or saddened. So we can use sadden, you know. Do not sadden the Holy Spirit. Okay? Grieve is, means the same thing. And we do this by the way we live. Now, see, the word grieve in the Greek means to distress or cause pain, grief, or sorrow. See, Paul already explained that the Holy Spirit's power within gives new life to believers. While we continue to battle with our sinful nature, we should be living for Jesus Christ each day. To refuse to do so, to consistently give into the previous corrupted behaviors, is to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. What a powerful incentive to do what is right and avoid what is evil. What a privilege and a responsibility to know that our actions have the kind of effect on God. Now here's the question I want all of you to ask yourselves. How do your words, thoughts, behaviors, impact God. Now, the, the last corrupted behavior is bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, and malice. And we find that in, in verse 31. See, these sins 
in this verse uh, are, are a picture of what our former life looked like. Well, Paul called it the old self. None of these have any place in a Christian's life as they foster dissension today and are the opposite of how Christians should be characterized. Now let us take a look, or a closer look, uh, at these corrupted behaviors. We have, again, we have bitterness. That's a spirit that refuses reconciliation. And that's one of the things Jesus died on the cross for. So we may be reconciled to God. Rage, outbursts of anger or quick temper for selfish reasons. This could mean continual or uncontrolled behavior. Anger, a continuous attitude of hatred that remains bottled up within. This could refer to what is under the surface, while rage refers to what bursts out. The anger destroys harmony and unity among believers. We have brawling or clamor, as what was mentioned when I read the verse from the New King James Version. Okay, so that means loud self-assertion of angry people determined to make their grievances known. Slander, destroying another person's good reputation by lying, gossiping, or spreading rumors. Malice often manifests itself through slander. This defamation of character destroys human relationships. And then malice, doing evil despite the good that has been received. See, this word is a general term referring to an evil force that destroys relationships, and it can mean anything from trouble to wickedness. It is a deliberate attempt to harm another person. So what we can do as Christians is destroy Satan's door, which we have the power and authority to do so because Jesus gave it to us. So in order to destroy Satan's store of corrupted behaviors, there are some things we must do to rid ourselves of these items out of Satan's shopping cart. And add the following items into our godly shopping cart from the store of godly behaviors. So let's look at godly behavior number one. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving. First things we can put in, that, in these shopping cart, of course, is, ten, is kindness. It means acting gracious and, and, and benevolently towards others, as God has done towards us. Tender heart. In translation, it means compassion or being compassionate. The genuine sensitivity and heartfelt sympathy for the need of others. Compassion also characterizes God. How about forgiving? We must forgive others as God has forgiven us. Remember, God gave up his only son, Jesus Christ, to forgive us. So we need to forgive others. See, God does not forgive us because we forgive others, but solely because of his great mercy. Now, godly behavior number two. Be imitators of God. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Being imitators of God. Hmm. Now definitely you want to put this in your shopping cart. See, we imitate God by following an and following his example in Jesus, emulating his attributes in our lives. Now the word be means become. So become imitators of God. See, Paul understood that this is a process and it will take some time. Perseverance, obedience, and devotion to God will eventually make us imitate. If we are imitators of God, we will be in his image of holiness because of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the power given us through the Spirit. We are to become godlike in our characteristics and obedient to
to uh, disciples in our lifestyle. Godly behavior number three in, in, in verse number two, walk in love. Now the verb walk continues the thought back in verse one, that we must imitate God. How we walk should be characterized by our oneness with him. And Paul explained that we are to walk in love. Our love for others should be the same kind Jesus showed to us. A love that goes beyond affection to self-sacrificing service. Jesus loved us so much that he gave himself for us and an offering and a sin and a sacrifice to God. He gave himself in death as a sacrifice in our place for our sin. God, uh, Paul also mentioned walk in love because love is the fundamental factor in a Christian's life. If we walk in love, we will not disobey God or injure or injure anyone. Romans 13:8 he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Here are three reasons Paul gave to or gives us to walk in love. First, being God's child. Having been born again through faith in Jesus Christ, we are one of the partakers of the divine nature, as we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And since God is love, we find that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it is logical that God's children will also walk in love. Number two, we are God's beloved child. We are born into a loving relationship with the Father that ought to, re to, to result in our showing love to Him by the way we live. And last of all, we were purchased with a great price. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one, has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Our love for him is our response to his love for us. The fourth godly behavior, nothing improper. We read that in verse 3. There must be nothing improper in the life of a genuine Christian. See, Paul mentions these three items we need to be aware of. One is sexual immorality or fornication. Any kind of sexual perversion. Jesus warns us in, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, that thinking immoral thoughts is as bad as committing them. Impurity or unclean or uncleanliness or uncleanness is aligning your lifestyle bent on fulfilling every indulgence, which is, which usually ends up on the sexual side, of course. Doesn't have to be, but more than likely it will, and it does. Covetousness or greed. It refers to an excessive desire for anything. Wanting something so much and doing anything to get it. These are improper for God's people to hold on to. You need to get rid of them. You need to throw them in the trash can and burn them. Take them out of your shopping cart. Let the precious blood of Jesus cover them up and wash you clean. The last godly behavior, we need more thanksgiving Less nasty talk. Read that in verse 4. That's last of all. Get rid of that, that coarse and obscene talking. And uh, let us use our voices to thank and praise God for the many blessings. Paul cautions that improper language should have no place in a Christian's conversation because it doesn't reflect God's gracious presence in this use of language by believers sometimes stems from their desire to remain inconspicuous by sounding like the people who surround them. 
Obscene, silly, and vulgar talk is to be replaced by thanksgiving. In this way, our words will build up and benefit others. Giving thanks brings the real joy of the spirit uh, the worldly people try to achieve with their lifestyle of humor and communication, which is not real good. This type of talk will harm the spiritual life. Paul gives a warning in verse 5 at the end. You can hold on to all those corrupted behaviors that Satan uh, puts in your shopping cart. You can hold on to them. You can go back and shop in that store as many times as you want. That's your choice. Okay? But if you do, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. Now I'm going to conclude our segment today by if you're if you're developed the habit of speaking harshly, stop changing that. Start changing that habit today. Stop. Start changing it. Stop it. Change it. Now you have that opportunity. It's your choice. When someone crosses you on the job, at school, or wherever. And you're tempted to tear into them with those cruel, nasty words that you can pick up in your shopping cart, that Satan shopping cart. Stop. Think about that. You know, you're a Christian. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Stop it. Then take a few minutes to give thanks and praise to God. Once you begin thinking how good God is, the more often than not, those harsh, angry words will just slip away unspoken. So instead of using your tongue to tear people down, why don't you train it to lift God, uh, God's praises up? Then living at peace with others will come very easily to you. Amen? And I'm Dale Vandenbogart, and I fully agree on God's word. And if you're watching this video for the first time, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, what you waiting for? You know, you can do it any time. You don't have to be in a church. I've mentioned that so many times. You really don't. You can be anywhere. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, if, if you've got your phone, uh, if you're out and about or you're sitting in, at home, you can get your computer, you can go to our website right now, bdbm.org, and click on free gifts. And read that entire page. Very interesting. And I love starting it out with, with, uh, with Acts 16, verses 31 and 32 with the Philippian jailer. And he asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And all you do is call on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And a lot of us have done that. So why don't you read that whole page? Go down to the very bottom, and, uh, and there's a prayer. And if you say that prayer from your heart, you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you will, you will join us all in heaven. We will all be together. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Welcome to the adopted family of God. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Let me pray for everyone right now. Father Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. At your throne of grace and mercy. And we thank you. Thank you for this segment, Father. Father, thank you and praise you. Father, may it have been a blessing to each and every one that watches this video worldwide. And Father, Father, just Father, help us, Father, to know we have the Holy Spirit and to get rid of those corrupted behaviors. Because we're not the we're not the old self, we're the new self. And to and to kick that shopping cart to the curb and take that godly shopping cart and be an imitator of and walk in love. 
and be and be a servant to others. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this segment. Father, we thank you for everyone that watches. I pray I just just bless them, Father. Bless them in their walk. And if they don't know you as Lord and Savior, may they know you and find saving grace today. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. And we honor you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. And I want to thank everyone for watching this video and the other videos on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. You can also like and follow us on Facebook. Also, too, if you need prayer, I mean it, any prayer, any you need, everybody needs prayer. I need prayer. Oh, I need prayer every day. And I and all of you who watch this and you pray for me, thank you for praying for continue. And I will continue to pray for you. But if you would like prayer, the next screen, we have our email address. Shoot us an email. We will lay hands. We will pray for you. And again, thank you for watching. God loves you. <laughs> we love you. Be blessed.